This is Twit. We are going to talk about a game that is taking the world by storm in many ways. <laughs> Here to help us explain, help us to understand and to explain Pal World is Polygon's own Anna Diaz. Welcome to the show, Anna. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about Pal World today. <laughs> yeah, so let's actually kick it off with that. I'd love it if you could tell us kind of what is this game? How is it played? What is Pal World? Because from the sound of it, it sounds like a cute little, I don't know, Tamagotchi style game. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of what's interesting about the game is I think a lot of folks had a lot of kind of pre-formed ideas of what it was like going in. So before it released, like, what we actually have today is very different than kind of what we imagined. So um, on the onset, people would kind of like affectionately call it like Pokemon with guns, which is it is kind of that. But it's also like this Frankenstein monster of a game that kind of like pulls elements from like the survival genre. There are, you know, monster collecting elements like Pokemon. Um, there are like shooter elements from that feel reminiscent of games like Fortnite even. So um, essentially it's a game where you run around, you try to survive, uh, you catch these monsters, you, you know, work alongside them and also, you know, fight against them, so. Wow, okay, so yeah, it does sound very involved um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of, of trying to understand what all you can do with it. As you said, sort of Frankenstein monster. So. Um, before we kind of dig even more into the game itself, I'm curious, how long has Pal World been around and why do you think it has become so popular? Because it just kind of, in fact, uh, it was your colleague Simone de Rochefort who quite literally just yesterday introduced me to Pal World and the surrounding controversy that we'll get to shortly. Um, but then right after I uh, spoke with Simone about this, then suddenly I started seeing Pal World pop up everywhere. And I thought, wow, people are really into this game. And I just felt like it came from nowhere. But has it been around for a while? And yeah, what, what's got people so interested? Is it that Frankensteinian quality? Yeah, I mean, so we saw the first trailer, like early looks of it in 2021. So we've at least been aware of it like since then. Um, but the game released in early access last Friday. So on January 19th. So like as far as it being around and people actually like getting their hands on it, that's very new. Mm. So like if it feels like it came out of nowhere, like it kind of did. Like it's been out for a week and it's already been a massive success. Wow. When you say massive success, what are we talking? Um, and then yeah. could you help us to understand what massive success looks like in gaming by comparing it maybe to some other games that have X amount of downloads or, or however purchases? Yeah. So just like for context, I mean, um, Pal World has sold uh, over 7 million copies in the first five days. And, you know, that number is like a little um, confusing because it's available through subscription pro um, pass as well on Xbox Game Pass. Um, so we actually don't know if they're counting those downloads or not. Regardless, that is like an astounding number. Um, and to kind of give something that is like more concrete that kind of speaks to the popularity of this game, uh, the game surpassed, it's available for download on the game storefront uh, Steam. Mm -hmm. And on there, it surpassed 2 million concurrent players. And uh, on in the history of that entire games platform, it is now the second highest game, like as far as concurrent players what? goes. Do we know the yeah. first? Uh, yeah, it is PUBG. Oh my gosh! Okay, that yeah. that explains everything. I don't. I'm not mm -hmm. a gamer, so I barely. But I, I know what PUBG is. I know how mm -hmm. popular and uh, regularly popular that game is. So that's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. This is. I I, I mean. Yeah, let's why why do we think that it has become so popular or why do you think it's become so popular mm -hmm. um even and I, I want to hold off on the controversy still a little bit but anything mm -hmm. outside of that controversy is there anything mm -hmm. that this game does that makes people want it yeah i mean i think like it'll be really interesting to look back and kind of analyze this further in depth down the line mm -hmm. but i think there's like definitely a lot of ways we can kind of explain its success. One is that, you know, it very much speaks to kind of um, the Pokemon fandom and uh, Pokemon fans for a long time have sort of been like missing a more adult, mature version of this series because it has always oh. been a series that is also child friendly. So that is one possible explanation. Um, obviously, it has a very catchy hook of like an image of pairing these like extremely like imagine like these adorable big eyed kind of 
uh, you know, lamb creatures with like, you know, heavy industrial military machine guns, you know, like it's definitely striking. Um, but at the end of the day, I think too, a lot of now it's growing popularity also comes down to the fact that it is like a fun game to play. Like it's on paper, it's really trying to do a lot and, you know, it's an early access. It's still glitchy. It's going to, you know, have its rough patches, but like, and more or less works. And that's kind of astounding. Wow. Yeah. So I'd love it if you could tell us a little bit about the history of the game. Um, we'll of course, uh, have folks check out the link that we have in the show notes to read your whole piece about the history of the game. But as someone who's not a big gamer, I found that fascinating that, it is, as you say, kind of a miracle that this thing even came together at all. And if you could compare that maybe to how other games are made, is it bizarre to you as well in terms of what you know about the video game industry? Oh, a hundred percent. So like to, to just to give a little context here, um, Takuro Mizobe, the CEO and co-founder of Pocket Pair, which is the development studio that created Pal World, um, posted a very lengthy kind of like history and retelling of how the game was made. And um, for context here, Pocket Pair is a smaller Japanese independent studio. Um, and so like basically uh, Takuro's um, or Mizobe's story just basically went through all the kind of miracles as Mizuba describes it that happened throughout development um, and all the kind of the conventions they broke uh, throughout the process of making it. And, you know, it's surprising that the game was able to be made this way because like even in the history of Japanese game development, there's typically like a lot of structure. It's very hierarchical. Um, you know, there's it's it's very organized. There are production pipelines for assets, whereas with Pal World, um, it's you know, they were working with uh, hobbyists. Like, for example, Mizobe hired a part time convenience store worker as a hobbyist, like after talking to this person, like via X. And so and that person ended up being like a central member of the team. Wow. Um, an another unconventional thing is they switched game engines late in the development process. So they basically had to rebuild the game. Um, there was no budget for this game like Mizobe in a very striking moment. Mizobe was essentially like our budget is our budget. It, the budget is until the number hits zero. Essentially. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, so I guess th you don't have all of the insights into this, I know, but mm -hmm. is it, did they feel like they had something here or is it, I'm just curious about kind of the mindset mm -hmm. behind deciding to do that until we hit zero, we're just going to keep trying to make this where they, was it I, I, clearly someone at a higher level felt like this was something that needed to be made if they were pulling from all these different places and, and making it happen. I don't, I don't even know if there's, you know, uh, much of a, of a question there. It just, that, that part kind of boggled my mind, I guess. Yeah. Well, and to that point, Mizobe did comment that like, you know, it's kind of hard to articulate like what stood out about this game, but that the CEO hopes, you know, imagine that this all came together because these people saw something in the game. Um, they saw that it was worthwhile and it was just unique of an idea that it would make it through. So even though we don't know the inside, you know, story of like why this connected with these workers, it's clear that there was, you know, it was interesting enough that it inspired these folks to make this game. Yeah. Uh, okay, now let's get into it. Let's talk about the controversies surrounding Pal World. Uh, apparently, there are two controversies, one being its similarity to Pokemon, and the mm -hmm. other being the animal cruelty aspect, which in some ways also applies to Pokemon. Um, what are people saying, and how, if at all, is the company itself responding to the controversy? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a lot of this discourse is happening kind of online on specific social media platforms that have their kind of own specific cultures. And so, you know, before we go on, I feel like it's so important to not give the angriest people the loudest voice. Yes. Um, yes. But essentially kind of what has been happening is a lot of folks have been saying that the game plagiarizes Pokemon um, and folks online have, you know, been essentially putting together threads, comparing certain uh, PALs, that's the name for the creatures in PAL world, PAL designs to Pokemon designs, going as far as to kind of even line up the 3D models next to each other and say, hey, this is 
stealing from Pokemon. And so for some folks, it's, um, you know, they feel like the game maybe isn't original or it's stealing from other places and um, is kind of what's behind those sentiments as mm-hmm. far as the Pokemon plagiarism. Um, and as far as the animal cruelty, it's pretty um, obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty obvious. Like you see the promotional images of the games. It's these, you know, the cre- cute creatures with the machine guns and also a huge part of the game is kind of putting those creatures to work. And so you kind of manage them and you can like literally like line up a row of like these adorable green little fox guys and make them assemble machine guns for you. Um, And so like you can in the game, it's pretty open to how you interact with these creatures. And so you can literally work them into the ground, like until they faint, they pass out. And so in addition to like, you can, eat the animals as well. And so you kind of can do anything. With them. Sorry. So, oh, yeah. so you can make them yeah. work and then afterwards you can consume them. Yeah. If yes, that is correct. Oh, okay. No. Good. Good yeah. to know. So you don't, you so, don't have to, yeah. right? You can, no, I no. think you have to make them work to get more weapons, but mm-hmm. can the consumption part can happen in a different way. Surely. Yeah. I'm and a so vegetarian it does hit this, in the game. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is gray area of like, you know, if you want, you could like build your pals like fluffy beds and make them nice baths and, you know, treat them really well. But then, of course, it's like a video game. So there's the flip side of, you know, folks are upset because you can, you know, mistreat the creatures and to a certain point also like incentivizes, you know, putting them to work and making them work. But we should note I, 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 just to clarify, it is mm-hmm. not as if while you're playing this game somewhere in the real world, there are for every creature that you're putting to work in this game, that there's somebody somewhere putting an actual creature to work. This is all just no. virtual, correct? This is yes, just a game. It's, it's completely virtual. It's not a graphic game. The characters are very cartoony. And even, um, you know, you can, but you can get a butcher knife and cut up your creatures and for food. And that is also censored. So like, even if, you know, you decide that like, there's a specific like meat that you want, um, it is like literally blurred out in the game. So it's like a very kind of, um, you know, the it's an interesting game because the cartoony playful aesthetics really contrast with like what's actually the grimmer parts of what are happening. Yeah, because yeah. we in real life take animals and make them, you know, take a plow mm-hmm. along. And then oftentimes mm-hmm. we take that animal and we destroy it and consume mm-hmm. it. And there's mm-hmm. no blurring happening there. So this at least is a little bit more uh, pulled back from reality. I, I suppose what I'm saying here is I understand if if we're contextualizing it in the sense that um, a game that feels a little bit like Pokemon and has this cutesy aspect might draw in younger folks, kids, and then you have guns and you have, you know, butchering and all of that. I understand that concern that's there. Uh, But as you point out, you know, trying to know just how many people are truly upset about this versus it being Mm -hmm. uh, the loudest people and the people who Mm -hmm. have the wherewithal to have access to the platforms that they can share Mm -hmm. this is, yeah, that's different. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. And I I forgot, did his pal world said anything about any of this? Yeah. So to that note, um, so Pal World um, or Pocket Pair, the developer of Pal World, has stayed relatively quiet on what's happened. Um, the uh, Mizobe, the CEO, who also wrote that history that I based the report on, um, did release one statement, essentially saying that people have been harassing the developers online, especially the artists, and slandering them and sending death threats to them, and simply asking for folks, you know, to stop doing that. Um, and it was just a very short tweet and also assured that, you know, various parts of the Pal World production process were, you know, monitored by people and that this is like, you know, been worked on by humans who have given this approval, um, and that it's not, you know, because there are also AI allegations as well. Oh, bum, 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 that some of these mm-hmm. may have been AI generated, um, well, I guess last I'll ask, if folks do want to try the game, you mentioned, I, I only knew about it being on Steam. You mentioned Xbox mm-hmm. as well. Where are the places that people can go to buy it? And is there an average cost uh, for the game? Yeah, so um, there's two two places that you can 
you know, download the game. The first is on Steam. And so you just download Steam. Um, it costs the the base price is thirty dollars. It's on sale for ten percent off right now. So it's a couple bucks cheaper than that. Um, and um, that would be available to download on like Windows PC. If you have a Steam Deck, you can play it on a Steam Deck, um, which is a portable uh, Steam device. Um, and in addition to that, you can download it. If you have an Xbox Game Pass subscription, you can download it on Xbox uh, One and Xbox Series S and X. So Xbox and Steam. I might have to talk to you after <laughs> because I didn't know that there was a way to play it on the Steam Deck. I have a Steam Deck mm -hmm. and I would like to play it, but I saw that it just had the Windows badge in Steam. And so I thought that meant mm -hmm. that I couldn't play it. So I might have to email you about that because I'm kind of curious. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Anna, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It was a pleasure getting to chat with you about Pal World. Of course, folks can head over to polygon.com to keep up with everything you're writing about Pal World and, every, and, and other things. Uh, but if they want to follow you online to keep up with that, where should they go to do that? Um, I'm on TikTok and Twitter at Pokachi. It's P-O-K-A-C-H-E-E. -E. Um, I'm mainly active on TikTok, less Twitter these days, but you can find me there both with that handle. Wonderful. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.